Now here's the part of the show we simply call In Case You Miss It. It's a chance for you to look back at the magic and the mystery of horse racing here in British Columbia from the Sport of Kings perspective. In Case You Missed It. Now continuing to look at some of your old time equine warriors from the past, our In Case You Missed It segment takes you back a few years. If we watch the amazing story of Jeff Singara, local businessman Jeff Singara, and his Cinderella race horse Bud Royale. Now get this, Bud Royale was purchased $50,000. He later went on to earn his own $2.5 million, and he turned out to be one of the Cinderella stories of all time in horse racing. Here's Bud's amazing story, in case you missed it. To be able to see him in such a happy, Wonderful headspace in such a beautiful facility. I mean, we, we just couldn't ask for anything more. He said he don't want a carrot. He doesn't want a carrot. It was a, it was a dream come true. I mean, no one knew at the time. We, we claimed him for fifty thousand, and he went on to fulfill every single dream that my whole family and I could have ever uh, come up with, even more so than we could have ever dreamt. The year ended um, with uh, Bud uh, running in the Cal Cup and winning. Uh, and a really exciting race, which really just set our ima imaginations going even further than what we could have possibly imagined. It's really the biggest day in, uh, in California racing for Calbreds. And we weren't really expecting uh, a year to top what we had. I mean, it was a, absolutely a dream come true year. In 1999, there was just no way we could ever top that. And uh, lo and behold, uh, it, the dream just got larger and larger and larger. He came up to Seattle and, and ran in Lonkers Mile, which uh, was a dream come true for, for all of us. Uh, it was probably the biggest accomplishment I could have ever dreamed of. Bud Royale fighting back. They settled out of Bud out the mile. Bud Royale on the inside doing a shade the better. Bud Royale in front and Bud Royale wins the We found the out mile. then at that point that he was Breeders' Cup eligible. And we said, well, why don't we give the good one a shot? Uh, Ted was really, really confident with the way the horse was training, and he was just really blossoming, really, really doing well. It, it was one of the toughest Goodwoods that I can really recall, with Old Trieste being at the top of his game, and of course General Challenge, who had just come off winning the Pacific Classic at Del Mar. Uh, it was a really, really tough race, so we said, well, why don't we just give it a shot, and let's just see if this story can continue. The whole thing was was very numbing. I just couldn't believe what we just did. And because I knew the next step was going to be the Breeders' Cup in Florida, and there's just no way that a, a kid from Vancouver that was at that time 30 years of age could possibly go down and partake in the biggest event in racing. And uh, lo and behold, we went, and uh, he did very well in the Breeders' Cup. The whole week was magical. We were amongst the the real hierarchy of, of the sport, and I kind of wondered throughout the week what I was really doing there. It was very surreal. The twilight was starting to appear in, in Miami. There was a very warm breeze uh, uh, blowing, and there was a, a, a huge buildup of electricity in the crowd that you could really feel. And when the gates popped open, it was, it was almost like looking at it in another person's eyes on a TV set. Really, you, you couldn't really imagine the magnitude of what was unfolding. And when he when he when he got right into the battle off the bat, and he got the first call out of the gate, uh, I really just couldn't believe it. I said, you know, here we are. This isn't something I'm watching on TV. I'm watching Jim Bannon and, and Brian Williams. This is something that I'm actually part of. And it kind of just set me back. I, I really couldn't get a grasp of it. But as they went into the first turn, and, and, and Bud was in uh, contention early, I just thought to myself, I said, you know, what if the impossible happens? What if he actually pulls us off and runs and hits the board? Bud Royale in close contact to the sharp pace. Al to Wakel, fourth toward the inside. And before I knew it, they were on the backside, and, and, and I looked over at Nassim, and I, I couldn't bring myself to say anything. And as he turned for home, I said, all I could have ever asked for throughout that whole week was that Bud was just in a place to win at turning for home. And, and of course there he was turning for home, battling in between horses. I said, wow, we could actually win this race. Climbing his way to the lead, Kathy Thornton Missile, but we're all hurt, it's Kathy from front. And the stretch battle was just incredible. He, 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 
had a very tough trip in between horses and he, and he fought through it and ran a very courageous race to hold off Golden Missile and uh, I noticed he'd been bumped a few times by the winner and I looked over at my wife Nassim and I said wow I said we've just fulfilled the biggest dream we could have ever possibly imagined. The Santa Anita Handicap is, is something that is very very dear and precious to us. We had been invited to go to Dubai but I really didn't feel right about sending this guy on that far of a journey. Uh, as prestigious as the race was, there was something a little more heartfelt about the Sanity the Handicap. General Challenge got a little revenge on us that day, as uh, <laughs> somebody just found out that General Challenge beat him once. <laughs> and, uh, uh, <laughs> and he ran a very courageous second. He doesn't and like that word. No, no, I think it still conjures up the competitive juices in him. But, uh, from that point, that was really the last significant race that the bud that we all knew ran. He never ever ran a race where he didn't give it his all. And I think everyone kind of lived vicariously through, maybe myself and him, where they thought, well, you know, Lou, that could have been me. I, I could have claimed this horse and I could have been living out this, this dream that, that, that's unfolding. So I think that's where the association with being the people's horse comes from. And I think also how he ran in his races, uh, he never let, uh, he never let a, a subpar effort ever enter the equation. He always threw down his life in every race. And I think people admire that quality about him. I think with his story, uh, you can look that dreams are very achievable. Uh, no matter how outlandish they may seem at the time. Um, if things are meant to happen for you, and you believe in something uh, deep enough, uh, life is kind of funny that way. It always sort of ends up rewarding you. Now, as far as a brief update on Bud Royale, his owner, Jeff Singaris, said Bud Royale is happy eating his carrots at Canmore Farms in Langley. <laughs>